past three years have been particularly difficult for institutional investors abroad, most of whom have abandoned gilts and U.S. Treasury bonds to shower attention on the supposedly high-yield sector. Many have even moved into lower-quality corporate bonds, believing that these are probably better than owning indebted government bonds at low yields. The situation has been less acute in South Africa. For more, J.P. Duplessis, Asset Manager at Prescient Asset Management, joins us in studio. So following on from our discussion now, Jean-Pierre, where the focus was clearly that if you invest offshore, you should be in the equity space. What are your thoughts considering we're chatting about the fixed income environment and opportunities in that space right now? Well, clearly the, the opportunities are, are pretty sparse in the, in the offshore market uh, with, with rates where they are. Um, you know, as an example, the Swiss 10-year the Swiss um, government bond yield is now at 46 basis points. Who'd ever thought that you'd get there on a, on a uh, developed world government bond? So certainly in the bond, in the government bond uh, market, there's not a lot of opportunity. That's really been driven by this, the central bank intervention. We've seen a, a period of disinflation and market concerns about deflation. And uh, that's really driven uh, investors or driven yields down um, over the last uh, well few months. Um, so there aren't a lot of opportunities in that space. What we've been doing in, in, in terms of our offshore investments where, uh, where it's fixed income is that we've been focusing on the inflation-linked space because it, it, it's very clear to us that central banks are going to keep rates very low for, for a long period of time and that they, they wouldn't mind a, a, a little bit of inflation. And in, that, in, that, uh, in those circumstances, you'd rather have an inflation-linked securities. There's also opportunities in the credit space. There are opportunities to pick up uh, high quality credit at, at, uh, at good yields. We've been focusing mostly on US names, um, steering clear of, of, the, of the troubles in, in Europe. So that's, that's really where we've been focused on, our, on the fixed income side in the offshore markets. Jean-Pierre, um, one of the things that I've, I've noticed about um, uh, bond markets, say a good example being Europe, is there's quite a, a lot more of a rational approach, it would seem to me. Um, for example, you know, Spain is uh, on, on north of 6%, whereas a quality German Bund will be uh, knocking around 1%, etc. Um, but to what degree have we seen um, international bond yields be distorted by quantitative easing? And how's that affected flows to, say, the European, uh, excuse me, the uh, US and UK markets? Well, no doubt. I mean, massive uh, intervention. And uh, when look, when you when you look at when you look at bonds in general, they're, they're affected not only by where interest rates are set by the central bank, but by the supply and demand dynamics at the longer end of of the yield curve. So when you start to push out to ten years and, and beyond, it's a lot about the supply and demand picture. Whereas we have we have seen a lot of supply come through. Um, Governments have been running deficits and needed to fund those deficits. Uh, and so we have seen an increase in supply in those government bond markets, but we've also seen an increased amount of, of demand So, uh, from, from that quantitative easing process. What is also important to, to understand is that while there's been an increase in supply in US government bonds and, and um, gilts, for example, um, there's been a lot of safe assets which have fallen out of that, that safe asset category. So we've seen the kind of agency securities, we've seen government bonds that markets like Spain, Italy, uh, Portugal, Ireland, where they, they were considered maybe uh, safe um, before the crisis, but those, have been le those, those are now no longer um, deemed to be safe. So there's, a, there's actually a shrinking pool of safe assets, even though it, within that pool there have been, e there have been increases, but no doubt there's been distortion from, from the quantitative easing uh, process. Jean-Pierre, a little of a, a left field question. How do you, given your focus in the fixed income space, feel ab about the LIBOR debacle? Uh, gosh, that's a, that, is a, that is left field. Um, look, uh, I myself uh, used, to, used to trade bonds and, and uh, sat opposite the, the uh, Treasury guys who were, who were giving the LIBOR fixings. Um, uh, it clearly wasn't an issue when LIBOR was very, very narrow because when you're talking about one or two basis points, there's not really that opportunity uh, to distort. Uh, we, it, it's always, it's very, also, also always very easy to look in hindsight at, at what happened in the middle of the crisis and uh, it's, it's now easier to look at it in much cooler, calmer heads. 
Um, but no doubt, if you if you uh, manipulation of the market in any way is is not acceptable and and quite right that people have been brought to book. Um, it wasn't seen as an area that would have been open to manipulation. I think that's that's what's come out of this uh, process. But clearly, when you when you're starting to see uh, LIBOR spreads uh, and uh, at extremely wide levels as they were in uh, in 08 in the beginning of 09, then that then that sort of opens itself up for up for that. Um, I don't really I don't really know that there was uh, there, there's a such a, so much of a smoking gun on that though because although there was manipulation that, and that's true how that really feeds through into the, how the uh, the sort of everyday man on the street. Uh, experiences interest rates is, is a little bit unclear because there's a lot of there's a, there's a great deal of sort of zero sum game you can talk about trillions in the derivatives market but uh, what was good for one person wasn't so good for, for other people so I'm not I'm not too sure how that really uh, affected the man on, on the street um, we saw the um, uh, the uh the LIBOR is basically a polled figure, as I understand it, John Pierre, and Jaibar, as I understand it, is an actual figure on reported deals. I mean, do you basically see LIBOR doing the necessary and going to a similar type of structures compared to uh, our own Jaibar? I think they have to. Um, I mean, they have, they have rates overseas um, like uh, Ionia and Sonia, which is the overnight uh, index rate. So that's just the overnight lending rate, and that is done on, on that basis. Um, I have to say it's, it's, it's some years since I've looked at that in, in tremendous detail, but I would I suspect that there'd be a lot of pressure to become to go to uh, to actual traded numbers rather than uh, e estimates because uh, the estimates are open to uh, open to abuse. Jean Pierre, the financial market gets obsessed with different terms over different periods. A while back, it was green shoots, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Kicking. The can down the road was another term. At the moment, we are hearing low yield environment over and over again. It, the, it seems to be the pervading theme. Do you think that the markets are starting to adjust and investors alike to this low yield story that is potentially dominating? No doubt, uh, it is going to. It is a low yield environment. We've been in it for. We've been in it for a while already. Um, and investors are going to have to adapt to this environment. Um, I saw a piece by Mohammed Al Arian of, Pim of Pimco yesterday talking about global rates all going to all going to zero. I'm not quite sure we we're going to get there. Certainly, um, South African rates uh, have a little way to go, although uh, um, we are slowly but surely getting there. And, and investors do need to think about how they how they um, how they go about investing in this environment where rates are being kept extremely low. It's not entirely impossible that uh, you were talking about uh, negative real rates. Uh, we've had extremely um, sort of high or negative, uh, negative real rates in the US, UK, etc. Uh, for, for some period of time. And it's not entirely impossible that South Africa kind of enters that, um, that environment as well. As an, and as investors, you need to be uh, thinking about how, how your portfolio is going to um, react to that, to that environment. As you mentioned, South African rates are coming down. Did the recent drop surprise you like it did the rest of the market? Well, the economists out there, it of course didn't surprise the bond market that was pricing in about an 80% chance of a cut. Well, the great thing about uh, Prescient is the great thing about Prescient is that we're never surprised because uh, we, we model scenarios around a number of different in, uh, interest rate environments. And so when things happen, even though they may not be our sort of central, uh, our central thoughts, they're certainly something that we've thought about and, and built into the way that we manage money. So um, yes, I think the, the market in general was surprised, but we're always looking to, to see what, how our portfolio would react under different scenarios, whether that means a hike or whether that means uh, a cut. And that allows us to, to, um, to not be surprised and, and uh, sort of act with cool heads when, when, when these... Uh, when these events occur. Uh, Jean-Pierre, the uh, traditional markets in Europe are either one of two things, uh, high yield and risky, uh, or not so risky and uh, extremely low yield, ditto UK, US, etc. Um, are there any other geographies where you'd be looking at investing? Brazil, for example, some of the Middle Eastern bond markets, etc., etc.? Well, you're absolutely right. I mean, there's a huge bifurcation in the market. It's either you're either risk-free and uh, extremely low in terms of yield, uh, or um, you know you, you're risky. 
There are still, uh, there are still opportunities out there. Um, we, we're broadening the range of kind of credits that we'll look at. We, we, stick to, um, we stick to higher quality names. I think if you, want to be in, if you want to be in sort of higher risk markets, you really want to be in equity markets and take advantage of the potential upside that you, that you get there. Credit can be quite asymmetric. You know, uh, the potential for a little bit of extra yield can be wiped out by um, big uh, capital losses if you, have a, if you have a credit event. So one needs to be quite careful about you know, where, where you look and not, not overreaching. Uh, for yield, so making sure that the kind of risks that you're taking on, you're being compensated for. So e either you're being compensated or you don't take those risks in the, in the first place, and that's very much the way that we look at uh, the market. Jean-Pierre, thank you so much for your time. Jean-Pierre Duplessis, Asset Manager at Prescient Asset Management.